Hi there, I'm Dr. Michelle Fadensteel, and I run Dirigo Food Safety. And Professor Hickey asked me to be part of this class so that I can talk to you all about uh, food safety and regulatory uh, infrastructure around food for your class. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, we're going to cover a whole bunch of things over a course of several short videos. There is a uh, recommended reading list. Um, the space around food and agriculture is extremely heavily regulated and the regulations are confusing. And so uh, we're going to try and uh, do kind of a 30,000 foot view of them uh, during the lectures. Uh, this week. I will tell you a little bit about myself. We'll go into this a little bit more when I when I start the actual lectures, but I run a company called Dirigo Food Safety. We are in Yarmouth and I live in Cumberland. I'm recording this at my house because it's Fridays and uh, like many Mainers, I'm an entrepreneur and I have to balance uh, work and home and kids and um, we're getting ready for the weekend here, and so if you hear uh, noise in the background, that's my kids. We homeschool, and uh, we uh, do what we can to make it here in the main economy, as I'm sure many of you are familiar with. I am a veteran, a veterinarian. We got to Maine after I served in the U.S. Army Veterinary Corps. We're the smallest corps in the Army. I was a base veterinarian at Fort Monmouth in New Jersey and then the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. So go Army, beat Navy. Good football game last year. And um, what I've essentially done is I have uh, taken the job that I had in the military and created a business out of it. I was a captain in the military. I had 21 soldiers reporting to me and I inspected food from Cape May, New Jersey. So, you know, like on the way to Cape May, all the way through Rochester, New York, because the Department of Defense is the largest purchaser of everything on the planet from submarines to destroyers to pretzels and hot dogs. And you may have heard that an army travels on its stomach. That was from Napoleon Bonaparte. Well, it's incredibly important that that stomach not have foodborne illness. And that's from the White House all the way through to basic training and the MREs that uh, folks eat when they're downrange, as we say. <laughs> um, all of that food uh, is inspected and or um, the food safety planning is looked at by U.S. Army Veterinary Corps. Um, and that's because foodborne illness can, act, is, can be absolutely devastating to a um, army. So a story you might not be familiar with was that um, back at the uh, Battle of Fort Ticonderoga, uh, at the beginning, at the founding of our country, uh, the French occupied the fort. Um, so this is during the French and Indian War, which was actually a dispute between the British and the French over the colonies. And during the French and Indian War, we had this battle at Fort Ticonderoga. Well, the French occupied the fort. There were six army officers. There was one cook and there was no food because the British were laying siege to the fort. The cook uh, had an old chicken that he was going to serve in the officer's mess. Uh, the chicken had gone off. He knew it. So he cooked it in a, in a real thick sauce and everything. Uh, and the, there was only one officer who didn't eat it. He was the officer of the watch. And the next day, five of the six officers were in the latrine at Fort Ticonderoga. The British fired one shell. It hit the latrine, killed all the officers, leaving one officer left for the entire fort, and the fort surrendered. That is foodborne illness in action. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> there. If you are, are there any veterans in the um, <clears throat> in the audience or um, anybody who knows anybody, you know how devastating foodborne illness can be. I have a buddy that was uh, with the Marines in Fallujah in Iraq, and he actually got into this work because he had a whole fob for a uh, Ford operating base uh, that went down to about seventy percent fighting strength in Fallujah during during the surge. That was devastating. <laughs> you can't have 70% fighting force during a surge. Uh, and it's because there was a failure in country around food safety and food safety planning. So the work that we do is incredibly important. Um, it's called, you know, I'm a veterinarian by training. And I went to uh, the University of Georgia College of Veterinary Medicine. I actually studied public health. 
Um, and, you know, there are lots of different ways people go into medicine. Uh, I'm in regulatory medicine. And regulatory medicine has two parts, food and drugs. Um, kind of hence the FDA. And most of the people who uh, have my background uh, work for the Food and Drug Administration. And I don't, um, partially because they wouldn't hire me. <laughs> um, but also um, partially because I found uh, th th my business has been successful. Um, you know, people and small businesses here in Maine and across the country, I actually work internationally too, uh, need help coping with the regulatory burden that the USDA, the FDA, the State Departments of Agriculture, and the State Departments of Health uh, put on them. Food is incredibly regulated, as it should be. Um, and, you know, you need your farmer three times a day. And it's the people who are working in these regulations who are trying to make safe food a reality for the American people. Uh, it's, an, it's an incredibly difficult job. And as you go forth in your careers and things like that, it's really important to understand um, if you're working in sustainability, if you're working in food systems, if you're working on poverty alleviation, if you're working on any public health program whatsoever, any urban planning program whatsoever, it's incredibly important to understand how food interacts with what you're doing and how food regulations interact with what you're doing. So with that in mind, we have a few things that we're going to cover during these. We are going to uh, do a presentation uh, in several different parts that I call the language and landscape of food safety. And I'm going to walk you through various examples of how food is regulated and what this means for small businesses. All right, and then the second presentation is going to be all about um, emotional intelligence when it comes to uh, conducting the things that we need to do to make food safe. Okay, so when you're working with companies or you're in a company where any regulation hits, you know, whether it's a food safety regulation or you're working um, in some of the other industries, in biotech industries, in um, healthcare. I mean, you know, healthcare is as regulated as food. The joint, the joint commission, as we call it, is the third party auditing organization, and I'll explain what that is, in healthcare. So all the stuff that I am talking about um, is applicable if you change the word food to whatever industry you're talking about and you're working with. Um, the stuff that I am talking uh, talking about is is for both service and manufacturing sectors, and so you uh, you're um, you need to think about if you're not going into food and agriculture, what how this will apply uh, to the sector that you're going into because it's a reality for all sectors of the American economy, regulation, market responses, that sort of thing. So. Anyway, uh, that's so that's who I am. There's uh, some reading that's gonna come along. There's a handout that goes along with the um, with the second presentation. Uh, again, I'm Dr. Michelle Fain and Steele. You're more than welcome to contact me. I love talking to students. I love having students. You're welcome to come spend a day with me. Um, so I can explain what the heck we do and how it goes on. Um, and how we can, you know, really drive main economies, Maine's economy forward through food and agriculture. Thanks so much, and I look forward to uh, I look forward to all the lectures.